It's Bourbonite, hello, I'm Chad. And Sarah is normally right over here, but she has COVID right now, so I'm doing it solo. But normally I would say, Sarah, we've got some bottles here on the table, what do we have? And then she would say, we have Brothers Bond. Brothers Bond, yes, the bond of two brothers from a TV show, The Vampire Diaries. You may also know them as Ian Summerhalder and Paul Wesley. Two guys whose friendship grew over the filming of that TV series and their bond grew as well. And bourbon was actually, it had a lot to do with it. So they decided that they wanted to venture into the whiskey space. Now, here's the thing. That right there is enough to turn some people off and we get it, the celebrity space with whiskey doesn't have the best track record as we kind of showed in one of our previous episodes, which I'll link right up here, where we ranked celebrity whiskeys. We are well overdue for a 2.0, which is why we've been gathering some more here. But I, I do think definitely since then, the space has gotten better. A lot of people see it as a cash grab, and that can be true for a lot of the celebrity whiskeys, but not all of them. And we've seen some starting to rise to the top. We've reviewed one of these so far on a live, which is this one here, their base offering, the 80 proof. So I'm actually gonna spend the least amount of time talking about that one since we have talked about it. But although this one was 80 proof and which is just an area, unless you're talking about vintage, that Sarah and I just don't really hang in anymore, it was still pretty decent. So maybe these two brothers will help the uh, celebrity whiskey space. So this one here, the 80 proofer, it's gonna be around $44. It is a minimum age statement of four years. It is from Lawrenceburg, Indiana, which pretty much means it is MGP or Ross and Squibb, whichever you prefer. And it is a four grain. I know the cast strength is, is uh, described as a combination of three unique mash bills to make a four grain overall. Uh, I think the cast strength is just the cast strength version of this. Although on their website, they didn't mention that. They only mentioned it with the cash drink, but I assume it's also the same. But this is a four grain. Uh, it is a 68% corn, 22% rye, and then that remaining 10% encompasses wheat and barley, but they won't give us the breakdown there. They said that's, that's their secret. And if only we knew what the ratio was with that last remaining 10%, we can make this at home ourselves. So close, so close. Getting a lot of honey on the nose here sweetness, but I can kind of get the barrel, the barrel notes, uh, the oak, a little bit of char sort of underneath there, maybe? At 80 proof, it's just, you know, so watered down. It's a barely legal bourbon. You know, you hear us talk about 51% rise as being barely legal rise. Well, an 80% bourbon is a barely legal bourbon. It's just not a space that we really play in that much anymore, but here we go, to your health. Yeah, I'm getting some honey on the palate, some sugary sweetness, for sure. Kind of like some golden grams uh, sort of flavor in there. Not real complex, but would you ever expect that of an 80 proofer? I mean, usually not. Not a whole lot here to write home about. But if you're getting into this because you've never been into bourbon and you like the Vampire Diaries, I mean, this might be a bottle that you buy for that reason. So it's a good idea to have a very approachable uh, expression for those people who might just have have bought the bottle because of the connection to the show. So because of that, it's, you know, it's good to have a nice, easy, approachable bourbon. It might stair step them up to some, uh, some other things. So can't be mad at that. Now, here's the interesting thing on their website, Brothers Bond website, that is. They list the finish in a way that I've not seen before. They list it as an amount of time. You know, normally we'll say, oh, it's a medium long finish or a long finish or a short finish or whatever. They say this is a minute and a half long finish. So. I kind of want to test that. Let's get a timer going. Nope, that's a calculator. I always do that. Stopwatch here. I'm gonna take a sip. I will speed this up and post. Um, I mean, I guess it's still there. Okay, it's 50 seconds right now and I'm calling it. I'm calling the finish DOA. Uh, so not a minute and a half in my opinion, but let's see what happens when we go up to the cast strength. Oh, actually, this is the rye. I've been calling this the cast strength the whole time. This is the rye. I want to go to the rye next, actually, so let's do that. want to go to the rye because it's 95 proof, and I know 
from research that it's not a 95.5, so it's a 77% rye. So not a barely legal rye, sort of there in the middle, but I think the 95 proof is gonna be the way to go, and then we'll go up to the 114.08. Normally you save rye for the last, but with that proof difference, I decided to go in this direction. Oh, but it smells high rye. If you told me that was a 95.5, I would have been like, okay, I believe you. Okay, I believe you. This is $60, also a four year minimum, also from Lawrenceburg, uh, Indiana, and also a four grain mash bill. So 77% rye, 16% corn, and then that remaining 7%, they just say mysteriously, is wheat and barley, but they won't tell us the breakdown. Again, if only we had their secret recipe foiled again. Yeah, I get a lot of sort of lemon and eucalyptus and um, you know effervescence, pine needle forest, uh, very sort of 95.5. That's 95% rye, 5% malt barley, by the way. 95.5-ish in here, but just 77%, okay. $60 suggested MSRP on this guy, so to your health. Yeah, a lot of what was going on in the nose is reflected in the palate. Oh, a little, little drying. I would think this might be a 95.5 rye, just based off of the uh, the palate. Hmm. Okay. Hey, uh, this is welcomed, right? Getting a nice uh, uh, hug here. The chest feels. I guess you have to call it Indiana hug. A brother's a brother's hug. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. But yeah, sort of dry. I want to go in here for the second sip though. Second sip. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> kind of all around the mouth there. Uh, cracked black pepper, almost winter mint type of uh, palette here. Pretty decently long finish. Now they advertise this finish as a two minute long finish. This is closer to two minutes than the 80 proofer was to a minute and a half, but I'm not gonna do the, the, uh, the timer because the cast strength also says it's a two minute long finish. We'll try it on that. But I would say this is, this is pretty accurate to that two minute long finish. Yeah, there's no mistaking this for a bourbon. This is a rye, and a good one at that. $60, I think that's pretty pretty aligned to what it should be. Okay, well, we're gonna move on to the cast strength, but before we do, you know what we have to do? We have to tell you about our home, we, yes, and we. It's, it's me, it's the royal we. I have to tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the t-shirt that I'm wearing, uh, the glasses that I'm using throughout the episode here, hats, hoodies, uh, sweatshirts, uh, t-shirts, uh, bottle cut candles, coins, coffee, you got some coffee left, and that amazing cocktail syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. Now this is where normally Sarah would say, uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash disbourbonite. That's where we give them uh, lots of extras, including first access to all of our barrel picks, sometimes very exclusive access to those barrel picks, discounts on the merch that I was talking about at Whiskey Ambitions, after the episode exclusives, uh, polls, uh, so much more, trips and all that jazz at patreon.com slash disbourbonite. All right, give me a second here to recover from this rye before we go into the cast strength. We'll be right back. All right, it is cast strength time. This is the one I've been looking forward to. Although that rye was pretty good. We're looking at $84.99 suggested retail price on this one. Again, as I was saying before, this one on their website is where they said it's three distinctive mash bills that are then married together to create a four grain. They did not break down the mash bill for this cast strength, but I, I think it's just the exact same as what's here in the 80 proof. I would assume, nothing to lead me to believe um, otherwise. Now, you might be dealing with a different proof on your bottle. As I said, this one's 114.08, but on their website, they're talking about possibly a newer release, which is 115.1 proof. Mm, this one's a little bit more floral. I guess I'm comparing it to the 80 proofer, not the rye, but more earthy than the 80 proofer. Definitely more barrel. Hmm, sort of a dark honey, maybe some clove spice in there. Hmm, pretty good nose, much better than the 80 proofer. Take your health again. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay, uh, <laughs> liking, liking the proof jump there, yes. First thing I sort of thought of was like, um, some ripe melon, but uh, maybe it's more like a honeydew because, or maybe I'm just thinking because I am also tasting honey. Don't eat a lot of honeydew, I have to say. This one, like the rye, is also uh, a little dry, but the fruitiness, it's almost sort of like maybe some dry fruit, pretty good amount of caramel, your typical flavors. But as the finish starts to roll in, you are getting a lot more of that barrel, sort of candied fruit, 
a little bit of stone fruit and although it is sort of a dry finish sort of dry in the way of like um you know a graham cracker have you going for your water pretty af uh, often after drinking it or eating it you eat a graham cracker not really a killer because you know a, a dry whiskey is a little bit of a killer for me or it can be this i wouldn't call it a, a killer but it's more of that yeah graham type of um flavor in the finish now i might say without running a clock or anything that the rye actually has a longer finish than the bourbon but it's a pretty long finish do we want to get scientific about it and pull out the uh the timer again let's do it Yeah, I'm getting more of the the melon uh, third or fourth sip. Melon going into barrel, char, dark honey, graham cracker, golden grams. Finish still going. I, I wanted I wanted to go back for a drink. That tells you something. But letting it go. It's 45 seconds right now of finish hang time. Still going. Definitely creeping down to the chest feels that Indiana hug, that MGP, that brothers brothers bond hug. The other thing that was interesting that I want to try is on all three of these, they listed the empty glass as beeswax. I would imagine that's obviously got to be a nose. You can't drink an empty glass, so I want to finish this and then see if we have uh, beeswax on an empty glass. We're at almost a minute 45, and it's hanging in there. Maybe I spoke too soon about the rye having a longer finish. Okay, I'm calling it. It's a two minute long finish. <laughs> Maybe two minute plus. It is a really long finish. That's great. Um, overall thoughts. I think the 80 proofer, it's just not a place that we play in that, that 80 proof. It's barely legal bourbon. And for $44, I wanna be putting that towards something that's 90, 100 proof, a good bottle and bond or above or saving that more for like a $50 thing or, or more. Um, it's good. I would recommend this for people who are trying to get into bourbon. The rye, I was actually really impressed with it. To me, it drinks more like a 95.5 than a 77% and mystery um, percentages uh, for what was its price again? Referring to my notes, $60. Yeah, um, definitely worth going from 44 to 60 for the 95 proof rye um i thought it was actually a really quality rye i'd recommend it for that yeah and then uh 85 suggested price for the cast strength definitely uh, a longer finish than i was expecting that nice honey and barrel in there is rather good i if i tasted these blind and, and had to be like pick out this the celebrity <laughs> whiskey, uh, I don't think I would be pulling this one because it tastes legit. You know, potentially on the younger side of the four-year minimum, but honestly, none of the notes that I gave were it's a little young or youthful or grainy, so uh, age isn't always everything if you pick the right barrels for your blend. So, uh, yeah, I would say if you're fans of the show, for sure, check it out. If you aren't and you're just wondering how to spend $85, I think there might be some more economical ways to spend it than on this guy here, but just taste alone, it's it's got it there too. So yeah, I recommend. I forgot about the beeswax. Okay, empty glass on the, um, the cash drink. I don't smell a whole lot of beeswax, but I could be convinced that that's beeswax. All right, there we go. Well, hey, we made it through an episode without Sarah, although it's gonna be a lot more editing because it was a lot more pauses where normally Sarah would have come in with uh, you know, some better tasty notes and, and so forth. But I think I did okay. You let me know gently down in the comments below, but that's where I better leave it. Oh no, I'm gonna have to like scoot over here. If you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There are suggestions of other videos down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, everybody, and until next time, drink more bourbon.